Uh, good evening, folks. Dr. Freedom of the Times and Dr. News. News from in and around the universe that may or may not affect you on a weird, strange, emotional, and almost professional level that will make you just say, ah, that's it. All right. Yeah. Okay, it's just been a weird couple of days because, like I said, I, I'm not going to go into it. There was just some bullshit going on on Facebook. And let me repeat these numbers for the 33rd time because somebody out there can't get it through their head. The show started out with 8.22 million on the overnights. It ended with 5.3 million in the last episode, which gives you a grand total of 2.9 million viewers lost on the overnights for the last season. Now, somebody is jumping up down going, well, so what? They lost 4 million on the consolidated. Then I have to keep repeating myself like a broken record. Eccleston lost 4 million over his season. Then they go, he lost 4 million over 13. I, like, I don't care. The numbers are still there. The series still had a higher series average than the last few years. But what amazes me is this. Let's drop all that. You've got all these guys jumping up and down. We all feel this way. We all feel that way. Making generalizations out the yin-yang. When meanwhile, why don't you just come out and think of this. If there's so many of you that didn't want a female doctor and there's so many of you that want to go back to the old order, let's get rid of Chib and all that. Where the hell were you the last few years with Peter Capaldi? Where was all this grand support when the ratings were tanking for those last, you know, for those three seasons? Where the hell were you? And now you want to come back out of the locker room, and, you know, when the game's already, you know, halfway, you know, going into halftime? Well, that's a bad analogy, but still. It just amazes the hell out of me that, you know, you know, we lost more numbers with Peter Capaldi than crazy. And yet, where were all these negative videos? Where was all this bashing? Where was all Moffat has to be fired and or hung? That's what just amazes the shit out of me. They all turned their backs on the, on Peter Capaldi, and now they're going to piss all over Jody Whitaker and, and Chris Chibnall. It's like, where were you? That's all I got to ask. Where the F were you when we needed you? Uh, all I can say is it's a matter of history that it's much easier to destroy than it is to create. And sometimes you don't get things right the first time around. I'm sorry. That's just the way it is. They decided to go out on a limb and try something brand new. And to a lot of people, you know, some people, it didn't work. To a lot of people, it did. To a lot of people, it didn't. That's just fact. That's the way it goes. Now, you got some people out there who were going to hate it no matter what they put on the screen. Then you had some people that were going to like it no matter what they put on the screen. And I keep saying, I kind of fell somewhere in the middle because it was not all bad. Uh, so I don't know what to tell you. It's just amazing to me that here we are during this holiday season, and instead of they coming together and saying, Merry Christmas to everybody, they're still going on Facebook, Twitter, and arguing and bitching and complaining. Like, this is something like, you know, a nuclear arms treaty. It's a television show. And as I've said, if all these guys really hated it, you know, especially the ones that are on YouTube making, you know, a little bit of money off their clamorings, then why are they watching every episode? I'll tell you why. Maybe it's because they don't have anything else in their life to bitch about, or maybe it's because maybe they just really like it, but they have to keep up this image that they don't. Because uh, uh, life just confused me. People confuse me. But I just want to say to you all out there, Merry Christmas. Right off the bat. Let's just say it. I was going to do a video last night, but I was monkeying around with the settings of my microphone. And I forgot to set it back when I did the video. And it completely screwed the audio up. Um, it really did. I tried running it through filters and all that. It was just beyond messed up. So there was no saving the video. So now you're going to get a dose of what was last night, tonight, with a few added extras. All right, so let's start right off the bat. Let's go on topic number one. Now, here's the thing. If you don't like what you're seeing, you can go to the BBC and complain, or there's people out there who get surveys. Fill out the survey form. Say, look, I don't like this. I don't like that, if you can get a hold of it. Um, I know Dr. Production is one of the folks to get them because he put this up. Now, here it is. Man. This is now get ready. Get, I hope you're sitting down. This is what you're going to get. This is one of the questions. 
What would you like to see develop in the next season of Doctor Who? Please pick your top three. Now, here's what you give you. More references to past Doctors or seasons. Okay, that's a check. Darker storylines, check. The Doctor Explorer Dark Side. So right there, I've blown my three. More complex storylines. Now, that's why I loved. As I brought up before, you had all these people bitching that Moffat's storylines were too convoluted, complex, or complicated, and too drawn out, yet you give them simpler ones than they bit. <laughs> oh. No romantic relationships between any of the characters. All right, so I agree with that. Villains from prior seasons, I don't know. Let's see. A romantic relationship between Ryan and the Doctor. A romantic relationship for Graham. How come Graham can't get a hold of that Doctor action? What's this against Graham? More sci-fi storylines, less social political storylines. A romantic relationship between Yaz and Ryan. Um, and if you folks have been checking out the fan fiction and stuff like that, there's already what's called Thasmin, by the way, the Doctor and Yasmin going around. A rom yeah, here it is. A romantic relationship, relationship between Yaz and the Doctor. Overarching storyline that builds throughout the season. And, oh, wait a minute. What's that? What's that? Dun, dun, dun. No, I added that bit. Okay, that bit I added. So. It was like something other and blah, 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 and they'd leave you a blank space that, you know, type out something. So I added that bit because why not? So, and it just amazed me. Let's talk about former doctors and former seasons, but let's not have anybody on the show who's been on it before, which I think would help heal the disconnection that some people are you know, feeling. And it might also bring a little more interest back from the guys, you know, you never know. But it just amazes the crap out of me how many people are at each other's throats and shit like that over a television show. All right, moving forward. Let's go on. Let's go. Right, over here, if you're on over to Facebook, boom, boom. These are all under Doctor Who Production News, this thing. Uh, TARDIS was set up in Norwich yesterday. You know, the people are running around, look, taking photos. With, uh, let's move up. Uh, and, of course, you can tell that is the current TARDIS by the sign there and the, you know, the shade and all that. So. Also, don't forget the secret story of the BBC Christmas tapes will be on. I already talked about that in the previous video. So there you go. Okay, so let's move forward. With great pleasure. All right, now, Pete, this is a little clip. It's about five minutes that you can listen to. And it's an excerpt from With Great Pleasure at Christmas. Neil Gaiman talks about his appreciation for the new apocalyptic poetry group and how they served as inspiration when it came to writing his comic books. Peter Capaldi reads The Magic Wood. The Magic Wood. All right, by Henry Treese, who is Neil's favorite example of a new apocalyptic poet. This was recorded live in front of a studio audience at the BBC Radio Theater. You have 28 days to listen to, listen to this. I clicked on it and was able to hear it. So there you go. You should be fine. All right, Jody Whittaker's inaugural Doctor Who series is legit the most watched in almost a decade. And once again, I keep telling people, other than Matt Smith, who has her beat in some areas, it was still, you know, series average wise, bam. So this just runs over some stats, you know, figures and all that. And, you know, things we already know from the Metro moving forward, a collection of Dr. Holiday treats. All right. This right here is that little special they put out was the night before Christmas. And it's narrated by Bradley Walsh and, you know, Jody Whitaker makes a little thing in it. Boom. There you go. All right. <laughs> I was like, either Yaz is pregnant or she's carrying a turkey. I, I, that's the first thing I thought when I saw it. Here's a clip. Boom, boom, boom. The 13th dog. So here's a bunch of just nifty little holiday happiness and all that. Also, here's that clip of Pearl Mackey that we're going to discuss in a second. Actually, I, I might have clipped that one because, all right. But basically, she made an appearance in the Crystal Maze Christmas special. If you want to watch that clip, you can link it just right here and get it over with. Bam. Chris Chimnall promises epic New Year, Who Year's Day special. You want it to feel like a treat, big, thrilling, explosive, moving, cheeky, surprising treat. Basically, if you want the special to be epic, and I promise it's going to be epic, it better be, Chris, and here's why. When you come back next year, you're not going to have the element of surprise. You're not going to open with 11 million viewers. I will be shocked shitless if you come anywhere near that because you've, you don't have the curiosity seekers anymore. You don't have the, you know, the layabouts. Sure, you're going to have a bunch of pissed off YouTubers that need something to whine about the next day, but there you go. <laughs> so remember that because coming into next season, you're on your own, bub. All right. 
Dr. Teases Dark, Dark and Explosive New Year Day special episode. And this is Mandip Gill giving her take on it, which is slightly different from that one, but there you go. Jody Whitaker will be appearing on BBC Radio 2 as Joe Wiley meets on Christmas Day. And I guarantee I'm going to die laughing when we find out there's a bunch of autograph seekers lined up around the building to find out she recorded it probably a week or two ago. So I wouldn't get all excited and all happy and giggles and say I'm ditching the family to go try to get a signature from Jody Whitaker that day down at BBC Two. Because chances are this is pre-recorded. All right, come on. Nobody's going to go out on Christmas Day to do a radio show. All right. So just a little common sense there I'm throwing at you if you're in that area. So, but if you want to go listen to this, you know, boom, here's all the details you need. And once again, yeah, all right, I didn't clip it. Here it is. Yeah, Pearl, Maj Pearl Mackey does make a little Doctor Who joke. I was going to clip this originally, but once again, here it is linked, her appearance on the Crystal Maze Christmas special, and I'll leave that for you to watch. All right. Captain John Hart is returning to Big Finish. You all remember him. He first appeared in Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, which was the season opener for season two of Torchwood. And I thought he, I thought he was a pretty good character. I enjoyed him. Bam, here you go. You're going to get more of him. He's getting his own box out with Big Finish. Anywhere, let's run there. Here's a look of stuff. Here's clips and stuff. Now, this is out of it's good mark to be out for release in January of 2020. It's currently available for pre order. Here you go. Here's the link to Big Finish. Here's your prices. All you're all set. And one last thing I picked up CBB's bedtime stories. I have not clicked on this to find out yet. Here's Annette Badlin. You all remember that face, right? What's her name? Well, <laughs> I figure I'd just throw that in as a little extra holiday special because I saw it and I was like, oh, okay. I've not clicked on this one, so I don't know. I bet it's region specific, but I'm not sure. Let me know. Okay, so once again, everybody, it's Christmas. Try not acting like a bunch of buttholes. Quit acting like asses. And all better yet, why don't you quit trying to instigate fights with people when we're less than a couple days from the time when the human race is supposed to be acting better than it is. I've tried turning my back and walking away from stuff, and now and people keep dragging it up like it's way caught. And I'm like, oh, I don't know what to say. I'm not going into it anymore because from now on, that's it. I'm ignoring it. It's Christmas. Let's all go out and enjoy the holiday season. All right. So once again, if you're out there and you're listening, have a great night. And if I don't see you before then, Merry Christmas. Take care, everyone.